This episode, we're going to be doing a 1967 Chevy Impala SS427. This is a one-year car. It is mint condition from the Mecham Auction. This thing's going to be really cool. Stay tuned. Now the first steps in doing this is we're going to be leaving the factory radio. What we're going to be adding is a 4 channel amplifier with a Bluetooth module so that the customer can use his phone as his radio and everything in here will look original. But we are going to be changing the dash speaker out to a new pair of 4 inch speakers and we are also going to be changing out the rear to a new 6.5 inch. That way he can have a little bit better sound, some coaxels with tweeters and the woofers and the four channel amp will be pushing them just fine. But the first thing we gotta do is remove this entire dash trim because we gotta pull the radio out because that's the only way to get access up here to this speaker so that we can begin the installation of that. Now to do the removal requires removing screws up here in the trim across the top. Then we're gonna pull off the knobs and then take out the nuts that are holding the shaft in and then pull the entire out. Then there's one more bolt on the back corner on a bracket holding the radio on the back side. We take it out and then we'll finagle the radio out from the back side and drop it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on getting this pulled off and I'll jump back in when I'm done. Making this video just to cover my butt to show I've just taken off the knobs is all I've done. I haven't taken the trim off yet. There is a paint rub right there that obviously when somebody took this dash off before they rubbed the paint I'm trying to get the light to where you can see it but uh yeah anyway right there is a paint rub so when i get done with this install that rub right there was not me so we've got the dash trim pulled um if you want to know how you take it out okay so first step is across the top here there's four phillips screws Okay, um, when you're doing a classic car, just a tip, make sure you mark where the screws go because sometimes screws will make themselves for one hole and then when you try to use a different screw in the different hole, all of a sudden you'll run into a problem. It just won't want to bite because you don't know how many times it's been taken in and out if anybody ever cross-threaded. So I keep the screws in sequence of while I took them out. Then down here across the bottom, there's these little tabs, I'll show it to you here in a second, but they go down, so you gotta, you pull out from the top, and then you slide it upwards to release those tabs at the bottom so you don't break them. Once you have that out, then behind there, there's the shaft radio, there's some nuts, you gotta take those off, then the radio drops back from behind. Uh, I took the ashtray, just slid it so it's out of the way, and the heating controls are normally right there. They are wrapped right here in paper. So the heating controls are cable driven. So you have to be careful when you're going to take out the heating controls. You want to make sure you hold on to the controls as you take out the last bolt. Because they're cable driven, there's actually tension on the cables. And when you take out that screw, it'll actually fly back. And you can slam into the back. You can damage the chrome. You can scratch it. You can do something bad. So you just want to make sure you hold it. And then you'll slowly just kind of let it down with the tension of the cables. And then I wrap them like that just so I don't uh, cause any damage to the front. And here we have the trim piece that I was referring to up top. Those are the four screw holes. And then down here on bottom, those are the tabs that I was referring to that slide down into place. So you'll pop the top out and then lift it straight up so those tabs come out so you don't break them. You don't want to bend it out too far or you'll snap the tabs. These are actually, I believe, are metal. Yeah, they're yeah, that's metal. So if you if you bend those or damage those, you're gonna really be in trouble. Then I also I forgot to say this is the trim that sits in front of the radio too. So when you take out this piece, this trim is behind it. And then you can remove this piece. And then once you have that removed, then you can get the radio out. And here's the radio, which there was no wiring going to it. You can see it has speaker leads here for front. For the rear output, it's been soldered shut. So I'm not sure if this car actually has speaker in the rear. If it does, 
This is not the original radio for this car, and I'm starting to wonder if it is or not. It only has one lead coming out the back. If you remember, these things had the uh, negative ground system, so this doesn't work. There was nothing hooked up to it. So I'm going to uh, see if I can get this thing to light up, see if I can get it to work, just because I think it'd be really cool for that thing to fire up with the car, because as of now, it's just not doing anything. And what we're after is right there. That's the factory speaker. So we need to remove that to put in our new bracket and new speakers. There should be, I believe, a bolt, right? Yeah, back there. That's the bracket. I need to take that off and drop this thing down. So that's what we'll get going on to next. So I've got the center channel speaker out of the Impala and I'm a little confused. Uh, I spoke to this company, Electrotech. I spoke to quite a few companies before bringing in this car. This company was really knowledgeable. The people were very nice and they seem to know the differences between the 67 and the other Impalas. Um, they have a speaker that they sell for this car, but they were out of stock of them. But they sold me just the bracket that I needed. So this is the bracket they sent. But they said you have to have the factory mount because the way it's held in, it's not screwed in. It's held in, you know, by, by a friction or being pushed up. So this is the factory mount. But I'm very confused as to how this mount is supposed to help me with this bracket. Because this mount is wrapped around the magnet of the original radio. I'm sure I just bend those tabs out and I'll be able to take it out, but I have two four and a half so that are going to be sitting here, so I don't have a magnet or anything in the middle. I mean, I meant to fab something up, but I thought that this was kind of made to go together, so I'm a little confused. So uh, if you know what I'm missing and you're watching this video, you can go and chalk one up for you're smarter than me, because I'm going to have to figure out what I need to fab here. So I came up with my plan. This is the speaker. That I took out which obviously it's trash there's no cone so I drilled out the magnet so I've got the motor here the magnet off of this one the bracket is actually made to slip over you know this right here and then that's what held that speaker in place so now I'm going to fabricate a base for my new speakers so that I can take this and have it mounted right there in between just like the factory speaker was and then it should hold in just like it was before so there'll be a plate here with this here creating the shape I need for this to go onto there and then I can slip it back in the car so I have to apologize because I didn't make a video with the speaker up in there um, really I was just hard-pressed to try and get those HVAC controls remounted without any damage being done because it is cable driven. They're under tension. So they're constantly wanting to pull back in the dash and I didn't want any damage. So as soon as I got the speaker mounted, I made sure I got that mounted in. But there's a bracket that comes across and wraps around the magnet of the factory speaker. And that's what holds the speaker in place. The problem with what I'm doing is I'm doing two speakers. So I have a speaker here and a speaker here. So the magnets are on the left and right. There is no magnet in the middle for the bracket to attach to. So I had to create a bottom plate so that that bracket could slide into it. I actually made like three different prototypes and I made one that was really complicated, but it got to be too big to where it wouldn't even fit in there because you also have to realize the depth. So you can't go too deep or the heating controls will have a problem. So I finally got it taken care of. I put a plate across the magnets to create a flat surface so my bracket could mount up to it, put the bracket back in, and now it's all done. And what I mean by the factory speaker is here's the factory speaker. I drilled out the rivets that was holding in the magnet. This is the magnet. So this originally would sit like that. And this shape, that square, the factory bracket actually slides on both sides of this and then has teeth that swing around and bite and hold it in place. Then that bracket mounts into the vehicle and holds this up against the dash. So by my magnets being here and here, I didn't have anything in the center. So I created multiple different pieces and I had to get it to where I got it down to the depth was correct. And what I found was going across both magnets, I did a 16th or an, I did 16th inch plastic going across that created a flat surface for the bracket to actually push up to and that held the speaker in place. 
So before we put the radio and everything back in, I really wanted to see if I could get this thing to power up and actually function because I think it'd look really cool to have this thing glowing and like it should. Um, I actually took it all apart. I did get it to work. Um, the bulb here is blown, so I'm going to have to get this bulb replacement. But I actually got the radio and everything to work. But it's a tube radio, so there's a tube inside here that gets very hot and it glows. And it's just dangerous and there's no reason to have that thing functioning. So I removed the tube from the radio so we don't have to worry about it catching on fire in this guy's car. But if you turn this on, I've soldered in my new lines off of the bulb and I get this LED to light up. Now I could just put the LED in there and be done with it, but I don't feel like that really represents the 60s bright white LED like that. It's not going to look right. So I'm getting this bulb and I'm actually going to put the new bulb in there so it'll glow like it should have and it'll be awesome. And it's just a lot of extra work, but I think it's worth it in the end. And there we have the radio. Everything is reinstalled, dash, everything's back in. Perfect. No issues. That yellow wire right there, I'm going to run up. That is the radio's wire. So I took the radio out. I fixed it. Um, the radio actually worked, but it is a tube radio. So there's a hot tube that glows on the inside. Just no reason to have that kind of fire hazard in here. I disabled the tube, but I left the power going to all the circuits that are needed so that he can have, let me see if I can make this happen. Uh, my keys right here. So you turn the key over, it lights up. So now he has that nice 1960s glow. I got a bulb to replace the factory bulb. Shuts off. So now that the front end is all together, we've got the back seats removed. All of our wires are actually ran and strapped. So I went ahead and did a ground right there at the factory back seat bolt. This was actually missing the bolts, so I'm going to put in new hardware there. But I've strapped it up to follow this harness. And then they go around there, and there's my rack. The rack will be Velcroed. It's not just regular Velcro like you use in your kitchen. It's that ridiculous Velcro that can hold 100 pounds. There's no way I'm going to put holes in the body of this vehicle. So the Velcro, after I prep clean that metal, then I'll use adhesion promoter, stick it. it will not, it'll be fine. You'll be able to pull it up because of the Velcro, but the bottom will never remove from the car unless you want it to. And then the amp will be mounted right there in the center. And the amp is actually the power base four channel, the small little four channel. And it will also be Velcroed down to the rack because the rack is so thin and right below there's the body. I don't want to put screws in and have a chance of hitting the car. So this will be rack Velcroed down onto the rack and then the wiring will come in, be perfect. And on the back seat here, just as I suspected, there is no speaker. So if we lift this up, you can see go around and try to do this with one hand without dropping the seat that is where a speaker would normally go but this vehicle did not have it so i'm going to try and massage a six and a half inch coaxial into there so that he can have some rear sounds as well without this vehicle having the factory rear speaker it seemed to be missing some sort of bracket or something that would hold the original one in so i had to fabricate and make my own so what i did was on the very front of this, there's a plastic ring, and I actually have it double-sided tape to the steel, and I use adhesion promoter, so it's just like a body molding on a car. It's not gonna fall off. And then the ring has threads, and I have the speaker bolted to the ring. Then I also made this bracket here that at the bottom comes up and tagged right here to put pressure, so at that pressure, it's pushing the speaker up against, so there's no chance of it ever falling back or doing anything silly. So that is actually in there now. Looks great. Should make a huge difference in sound. It's missing this factory screw right here. So as I've been working on the vehicle, anytime I find anything in here that's missing, I'm trying to replace it. And I'm trying to find the same size and hardware to replace everything. Because if I'm here already, I might as well make this car as good as it could ever be. And for my terminated ends here, I know there's a guy named Mark who has a a car audio YouTube channel. And I guess he just did a video with these. Um, I did not see that video and buy these. I've had these for years. So before anybody thinks that that's why I bought these, I've had these for years here in my shop and they're really nice if you use them correctly. 
Now here we have the amp rack. Um, basically what I'm doing so I don't put any holes is I have the massive Velcro that will adhere to the body back there. The amp is mounted. The Bluetooth receiver is mounted right here to run across. We're going to grab constant ground and remote turn on is going to go to the amp. This will create a remote turn on output for the amplifier. The accessory is going to go here. So when he turns on the ignition, it's going to turn on the Bluetooth module, which in turn will turn on the amplifier. Um, I've got everything already strapped and done here. This is the plug for the rear speaker. And these are the front speakers. And those leads are already in the vehicle. So now the next step is to solder these to those and create that plug. And then get the power and the grounds and everything where they need to be. Wire this up, strap them down, stick this in the back. And then we're down to just hooking up the battery. And that's it. Everything's installed. Right now I've got the... Uh, the light is on on the radio, so the ignition's on. Back seats, everything reinstalled. So now we take your uh, take the other phone we have connected. Go ahead and play some music. Carry on my So another little extra that I decided to add after I was done, I realized that if you're not listening to music, there's just kind of static dead air because the Bluetooth module is on, but there's just no music being played through. And it was kind of annoying that I had no way to turn it on or off because it was all running off the ignition. So I came up with a pretty cool solution. So now if you don't want the amplifier and the Bluetooth on, just shut off the radio. But if you turn on the radio, It's just connected, and uh, we could go ahead and play some music from our Bluetooth player. It's pretty awesome. Let's say we want to shut it off. So all in all, this was just a treat, honestly, to work on this car. This thing is beautiful. It didn't give me any troubles throughout. The car is so clean and so immaculate. No stripped out screws, no messed up trim. Everything went really well. Amp installs clean. You can't tell I've done anything to the vehicle. Everything I've done is hidden. And basically he gets in and he can jam out and listen to some music. And hasn't affected any stylizing of the car. Nothing has been modified. No holes have been created. Everything is as original as it was when he brought it to me which is exactly how this car needs to stay. The only thing I'm gonna offer him is when he comes back, when he comes in to pick this up, I'm gonna let him know if he wants to step up to like the next level, we could actually buy another one of those AM radios, destroy it, take out the shaft on the volume section. I could put in a level control there and make it look like, so when he turns up the factory radio, it actually turns up the volume and turns it down. That would be pretty cool. And I would probably suggest for him to get just a mp3 or a bluetooth player that permanently stays in the vehicle like in the console there just so you're not having to deal with your phone all the time just have something in here because this amplifier also has aux input so if you wanted to do that we could actually put the player in the center console run a 3.5 jack right into the amplifier then you have no more bluetooth nothing you got to worry about it's going to be a direct connection it'd be pretty cool so if he wants to step it up i don't know how much he's going to drive this car then maybe we'll get him back in here to do some more if he's just going to have this thing sitting in his garage and he wants to throw on some ACDC for his boys to show off the car, then he's good to go as it is. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful to some and interesting to others. I'm Cape Sipes from Custom Audio Reimagined. Take it easy.